This is the second video in the series on first order modelling. We are now going to look at spring damper systems. The video builds on the mass damper analysis of the previous video and introduces the concept of analogies between different dynamic systems. We're going to look at a few different arrangements of springs and dampers and you'll notice this builds slightly on the earlier video series on steady state analysis. First then, let's remind the viewer what we mean by a parallel arrangement. In essence, we're saying that there's an applied force is going to be distributed between the different mechanical components. In other words, we've got something like F equals F1 plus F2. So the force is distributed between the components. And the other point, which is key, is both components have the same displacement. So when we say parallel with mechanical, that's what we're meaning. Here's an example then of a spring damper set up in a parallel arrangement. You'll notice we've put a wall on the left hand side to ensure that only one end of the spring and only one end of the damper is free. We can now write displacement x is the same for both the spring and the damper on the right hand side. You'll see that we've distributed the force between the spring and the damper. So what expressions do we get? Well, if we look at the spring, we have the expression F1 equals Kx. So the force is the stiffness times the extension. If we look at the damper, we've got F2 equals B dx dt. The force is the frictional constant times the velocity. And force balance, F equals F1 plus F2. If I put these together, I end up with F equals B dx dt plus kx. So I get a simple first order differential equation. So a spring damper, where they've both got one end fixed and the other end is at the same point, gives you a first order differential equation. Now some analogies. If you look back at the previous video, you'll see we did a parallel mass damper. And we've given you both schematics here so you can see what's going on. In both cases, what do you notice? First order differential equation, but with the state x for the spring damper. First order differential equation, but with the state velocity for the mass damper. So they both give you first order equations, but they have a different state. One the state is displacement, the other the state is velocity. So they're analogous to some extent. Now, for completeness, we might want to ask ourselves what happens with some slightly different arrangements of springs and dampers. And we're going to give you a few alternatives just so that you know what to expect and what to check. Sort of things you might be asking are, how is the force distributed? For a series arrangement, we want the same force going through the components, whereas for a parallel, we want the force to be shared, distributed between the components. What about the displacements? Parallel means that you've got the same displacement of movement in both components, whereas series implies the displacements are independent. Now, sometimes the connections might imply that you've got a combination of parallel and series, and you'll be glad to know that's beyond the remit of these videos. Here's an example of something then that's almost parallel, but not quite. You'll see our fixed one end of the spring, so the spring has got an extension x. However, if you look at the damper, you'll see that the damper has got two free ends, not just one free end. So when I write down the equations, I get f1 equals kx for the spring. That's fine because it's only got one free end. But for the damper, I get f2 equals b dx dt minus dy dt because the damper's got two free ends. So when I put the forces together, I end up with f equals kx plus b into dx dt minus dy dt. So I have a non-simple expression because the damper has two free ends, so it's not a purely parallel arrangement because the damper and the spring are not sharing the same displacement or velocity. Two other alternatives that you might want to look at. Well, with this top alternative, I hope it's clear that what we've done is we've allowed the spring to have two free ends and the damper to have one fixed end. Or in the arrangement below, 
it's even uh, more messy. I'll just mark it to make sure it's clear. You'll see one end of both has displacement x. But because the left-hand ends are both free, I actually need two independent displacements. The left-hand end of the spring maybe moves through z. The left-hand end of the damper maybe moves through y. And so we've now got independent extensions for the spring and the damper. And so it's not a purely parallel arrangement. It's a little bit more complex. And the key thing is that this is beyond the remit of this video. So we're only putting them here so the students are warned. Be careful, look exactly what you've got, uh, mark down the extensions carefully, mark down the forces carefully, and then go from there. What about this one? Well this is a series arrangement and again this is here just for completeness. You'll see I've got a spring here on the left and we can imagine that has displacement x. We've got a damper which has got two free ends and on the right it's got displacement y. And in both cases, because these are series, we've got the same force going through all the components. So I can now write down the relevant expressions. For the spring, I've got f equals kx. For the damper, I've got f equals b into dy dt minus dx dt, because there's a relative movement between the two ends. I can use the same trick that was indicated out in the previous video. I can now write df dt equals k dx dt. And the reason I've done that is because in order to solve this, I'm going to take this dx dt here and I'm going to put it in here. So what I can now write is f equals b dy dt minus b, and this should be dx dt, but dx dt can be written as 1 over k into df dt. So you'll see this model is non-simple, so series arrangements tend, or for mechanical systems, tend to be a little bit more awkward than parallel arrangements, and that's beyond what we want to cover. So a summary. We've illustrated the model derivation for simple spring dampers when in a parallel arrangement. And what do you get? You get equations a bit like this. Force equals b times dx dt plus kx, i.e. it's a simple first order differential equation. We've also illustrated that you do need to be careful when deciding whether the arrangement is parallel or series or neither, some form of mix. And this might not be obvious unless you do a careful analysis of forces and velocities and displacements. These more advanced uh, problems are beyond the remit of these videos. Now to finish, some further remarks. These videos have only looked at mechanical systems which have linear movement. Many mechanical systems actually have rotating movement. Now, we're not going to do separate videos for those because the insights and the derivations are in fact equivalent. All you need to do is where you have force, instead of force, you'll be using a torque. So force units newtons, torque units newton meters. Where you had a linear spring with stiffness maybe newtons per metre, you're going to have some form of rotational spring which resists rotation, and that may have units newton metres per radian. Where before you had displacement in metres, now you're going to measure displacement as a rotation in radians. Where before maybe you had a mass inertia in kilograms, now you want a moment of inertia, kilograms metres squared. But otherwise, you'll find apart from the change of units, the insights and the derivations are equivalent.